Hello, my name is Amory Duffy. I'm a Principal Product Success Architect with ServiceNow and I'm here with my colleague Brian Quinn, who is a Product Success Technical Director with ServiceNow. Today we're going to be talking to you about how to configure the Service Graph Connector for AWS. So the agenda. We're going to cover what is AWS, what is the AWS Service Graph Connector. We're going to give a demo on how to configure the AWS Service Graph Connector and wrap up with a summary. So what is AWS? It's a cloud-based infrastructure environment that hosts virtual servers, or also known as the EC2 instances, in a customer AWS account. It has a user-friendly AWS console that customers can use to view their EC2 instances, including viewing what software is installed on them. It monitors these EC2 instances for any software inf infantry changes through SSM agents installing these instances and feeds them back any software changes to this AWS console. And on the right-hand side, I'm just showing an image of some sample EC2 instances in our environment. And for the one that you've shown is selected, what you see in the bottom right hand part of the screen are details associated with that EC2 instance. So what is the AWS Service Graph Connector? It's a service now ingesting tool for ingesting EC2 instance VM infrastructure data from AWS, along with what software is installed in these VMs and populating CMDB with this data in your service now instance on a scheduled basis. So now on to the demo. So here I am in my Washington instance. I've already installed the latest version of the AWS Service Graph Connector, which is 2.8. So just to get into Guide to Setup, I type in AWS. I go to Setup. I'm actually, in fact, I'm already in Setup, so I'm just going to click and continue here. So the first section here is configure the AWS environment. I'm just going to click on that. And um, it, it, if I click on this, it downloads a set of cloud formation templates um, that you will be given to your AWS administrator who will then use these uh, cloud formation templates to do the set required setup on the AWS site. And you'll see here there's a knowledge base article you can refer to for more information on these as well as a community article. And at the very end I'll be referencing um, a white paper that also talks to these um, cloud formation templates in detail. Um, so I've already marked this as complete. So that's why I don't need to do this again. I did this the same for this section here as well. So the next section then is where you configure your connection. Uh, the first section here is you configure the credentials. You just click on configure. And it brings you to Workflow Studio. And here is Workflow Studio. I'm going to go to the integrations tab. And here, <clears throat> this is my AWS credential alias. I'm just going to click on View Details. Now, I've already filled this in, but just, just um, to show you, um, you just click on Edit, and what you fill in here is your a a um, access key ID and the secret access key, and click on Edit Connection to actually create the connection alias. Okay. Go back to Guided Setup. So that's now done. Now the next thing is I, I'm, I'm actually going to test the connection. And you just, you see here the connection, the, the, the credential alias, um, and I just do test connection. And I can see that success. That's what we want to see. So we know now that our, the, the credentials are correct. So I just go back out to guide a setup. And the next piece then is on your updating the configuration properties for the instance. Um, and this is already pre-populated with my out-of-the-box credential alias. So, um, Brian, do you want to talk to um, uh, the fields in this form? Just to... Sure. Yep. So the rest of the, the fields in this form are is information mostly coming from your AWS administrator. Uh, so the organization details section, uh, this is the account and the ID, uh, the organization and account. Uh, ID and the organization name. Uh, so this is for informational purposes for tracking multiple organizations that you uh, might need to uh, import data from. Uh, the next section is AWS regions. This is optional. You can leave this blank to import data from uh, all AWS regions. Or if you want to limit it to just certain regions, uh, you would uh, comma separate the list of regions to, to import the data from. Uh, the STS assume role name section uh, is the STS role that uh, Service Graph Connector will use uh, for assume role to all of the member accounts. 
Uh, so the IAM user will do the assume role into this role in order to access all of the, the other accounts within your organization. Uh, this is the default name that is provided in the CFT files that Anne-Marie just mentioned for that are downloaded. Um, so we recommend keeping to the standard naming convention, but you can update it if needed. Uh, the next section is the, the S3 account details. Uh, so this is for uh, deep discovery and for EKS. So uh, when we run the SSM send command, uh, this is where the data is stored. So we would need the account ID, the bucket name, and the region uh, where that data is going to be stored. Uh, the next section, SSM send command document details. Uh, these are the SSM documents. So it's basically the list of commands that are run uh, to for deep discovery. Uh, the, these names are the default names that should be pre-populated on this form. Uh, this is how there are CFT files uh, in the, the, the zip file that was downloaded previously. Um, and again, we recommend keeping the standard naming convention. Uh, that way you don't have to modify anything. Uh, moving on to the other side, the management account ID. Uh, this would be the ID of your management or billing account. Uh, you only need to populate this if the IAM user was created in a member account uh, and not directly in the management account itself. The next section is the standalone account ID. Uh, this is really only used for uh, POC for uh, POC or testing purposes. Uh, if you do not have access to the full AWS organization and you only want to test importing data from a single account, you would put that single account here. Uh, so this means uh, if you have uh, if you don't have access to the AWS organization yet and you don't have all of the assume roles and permissions set up yet, uh, you can uh, test Service Graph Connector against a single account. Uh, the next section is for the AWS Config Aggregator. Uh, this is optional to use the config aggregator, but is recommended. Um, so if you are using it, you would fill in the details of the config aggregator here with the account, the name, and the region. Uh, the next section is for AWS key rotation. Uh, so Service Graph Connector has the ability to automatically rotate the keys for the IAM user. Uh, so here you can set the rotation period, um, the email accounts for errors, um, or groups uh, that receive notification when there are errors, in addition to seeing the status and the next date for the rotation uh, as well. Uh, the next section is for GovCloud. So if, you are, uh, if your accounts are in AWS GovCloud, you would check that box. Uh, so we use the right API endpoints. And finally, we have the SSM EKS send command document details. Uh, again, just like the other send command documents, uh, these should be pre-populated. Um, and these are included in the CFT files that were downloaded previously. Uh, and we recommend keeping the, the, the out-of-box naming convention here. Thanks, Brian. Um, so I just got to go back to guide a setup. Um, that's the, I, and I, this has already been done in my instance, so I've marked that as complete. Um, so that, that, that piece, that piece done. <clears throat> um, so the next section then is um, we've we've done all that is um, the EKS resource details. Let's just bring that up. Um, so you, I'm just clicking on edit here and clicking configure. Brian, do you want to talk to um, the fields in this form? Sure. So when uh, discovering when you have uh, EKS clusters set up in AWS. In order, if you want to populate your CMDB with the uh, pods and namespaces from that Kubernetes cluster, uh, we would need a VM in that same account and region as that uh, EKS cluster uh, that has access to, uh, um, to, to that cluster. So here, what we're setting up is the details for that uh, virtual machine. Basically, it's a jump box that gives us access to that cluster. Uh, so here you would configure the uh, ID for that VM. Uh, you would configure the account that that VM is running in and the region. Uh, and then for the connection, you would make sure it's it's linked to the uh, connection that you want this to this import to, to be used for, or for this VM to be used for. So in this case, we left it as the AWS default connection since we want this to run with the uh, default import. Perfect, Brian. So just to go back to guide setup. 
that's the EKS covered. Um, so moving on then to the diagnostic tool. This is the next section here. Let's click on edit and click on configure. So Brian, do you want to uh, talk to the, the, this um, pull down? Yep. Sure. Uh, so this is the diagnostic tool, probably one of the most important steps to, to run during your AWS Service F connector setup. Uh, so here we have the list of the multiple organizations. Uh, uh, if you have multiple organizations set up, you'd be able to select from all of them here. So in this case, we only have the one uh, main one set up right now. So uh, we're going to select that. Uh, here too, you can run a new diagnostics test. Uh, since SSM for software inventory, SSM for deep discovery, and EKS are all optional components, you can choose whether or not to skip those diagnostics tests here. Um, so here we're going to load uh, the results from a previous run. Uh, so the most recent run we have. And let me run through some of the important information in that diagnostic summary section. Uh, so number of accounts that should match the total number of accounts in your AWS organization. Since we're using a standalone account here, you will only see one. Uh, the number of regions should be the total number of regions unless you uh, configured it with that specific list of uh, regions to import data from in the when we were configuring the connection properties. Uh, the number of image API configured, uh, and most of the API accounts here should be uh, should show you the number of total number of accounts in your organization. Um, so they sh the numbers that should match. So if you have ten accounts, uh, you should see ten slash ten if they are all configured properly. Uh, if they do not match, then some of your member accounts may not be configured properly with either they're missing the IAM role or they don't have the proper policies attached to the IAM role. Uh, the hardware type API access is a 200 to show that we have uh, proper access. Uh, anything other than a 200 there uh, would be uh, a problem. Um, the select aggregate config API access and the batch aggregate config API, uh, that's only if you have configured the um, config aggregator. Uh, but that would be just checking to make sure that uh, the, we have the proper API access there. Uh, again, the API accounts here, you should have the total number of member accounts. If the numbers don't match, then there's probably a misconfiguration in one of the member accounts. Um, getting down to the S3 get API count and delete API count. Uh, so this is part of the SSM test for deep discovery. Uh, so for each VM, we would test, making sure we could get that deep discovery data. We could save it to S3, we could retrieve it from S3, and then we can delete uh, to, to clean it out. So you should see um, the total number of VMs basically in those, those lines. And then down at the bottom, you can see some more information about the basic properties that were set up, uh, a couple more pass-fail tests as well down here. And you'd also get some more details about some failures. So in this case, we have one failure here for the S3 get object. Um, so there was a, a 404. So this would uh, indicate that there's something maybe uh, configured incorrectly with this VM. Uh, so you should have your AWS administrator look into any failures here to find out what the, the reason behind the failure might be. Um, in guided setup, there are some, some great information about where you might look for each of these test to where the failures might come from. Uh, in this case, we, we understand the failure for this particular VM, uh, so we can safely ignore this. But definitely work with your AWS administrators to make sure you understand any failures you see on this diagnostics page before moving on uh, in your guided setup. Thank you, Brian. So just moving back to guided setup. Um, that was the diagnostic section done. Let's give this a minute to load. So um, the next step here then is you go going to configure the scheduled import jobs. Just mark, click on configure here. And just give it a minute to load. And then it brings up the AWS organization. That is the parent job. Now out of the box, it's marked active as, as false, but I've already set it as active, but you come in here and set it as, as active. Um, out of the box is scheduled on daily at 9 p.m. But if you want to change that, you can change the time here. And if you want to run it more frequently, you come and change it to peri periodically here. Uh, down below here, you see all the child jobs that run after the parent job finishes and the order they run in. Um, so 
these are all the child jobs here. Um, so just to get back out here, I'm just going to leave because I don't want to make any changes. I'm just going through this. Um, so the very last section then is on multi-instance setup. So this would be um, a, a, a good use case for this would be if you're using um, GovCloud, for example, right? So you want to create a separate instance for that. So um, I've already gone through these steps, but this you have to go to these steps to set, make sure you have the right permissions set on these the sys data source table and on the scheduled import set table. And then you run these um, this background script to clear the cache, which is necessary as well. And when you've done all that, you come down to create new connection and credential alias. And it brings you back into Workflow Studio. And go back to integrations. And I see my address. Now, I've already created this. Uh, what you do is you add connection. Uh, Gov, AWS Gov Cloud is the one I already created. Um, so I, you, you put in your access key ID and your secret key. Um, access key. I've already created this, so I'm, I'm not going to do that again, um, but I'm just going to go back out here again um, to guide it set up. And you, after you've done that, you then come in and you go into um, the, 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 the you, you select your new connection alias that you just created. And you fill in, like what Brian already talked about, all these fields here again for your separate for example, GovCloud instance, um, and then go back to guide to setup. You um, uh, down here again. So let's come back in here. You um, you, you fill in those fields. Um, I would, Brian already explained about EKS. Uh, lastly, then you come into configure configure the scheduled imports. And I see here my new AWS Gov is, you know, um, was generated, created. I mark it as active, as, as true. And it shows all the child jobs that if it has AWS Gov listed in them to show that these are the AWS Get Gov Cloud jobs. And just lastly, to show you, um, uh, I'm going to go just to kick off the job, uh, this is the AWS organization out of the box job. Right, so I'm just going to select this. And I, literally what I do is I just click on execute now. I just want to show you like just how you would test um, uh, just to make sure that this uh, job is running, right? So just close this for a second. So you just go to um, concurrent import sets, import sets. And I can see here that the AWS organization, this is running. Um, I can see that there. And it's loading. I'm not going to wait for this job to finish, um, but this 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 is just a, a walkthrough of, of how to um, configure the AWS Service Graph connector. So to summarise, we reviewed what AWS is, we reviewed what the AWS Service Graph connector is, and we demonstrated how to configure the AWS Service Graph connector. And lastly, for more information. I'm including links to the Service Graph Connector for AWS ServiceNow documentation page and a white paper I wrote for the AWS Service Graph Connector, which is now available in the ServiceNow community. Thank you.